I really can't do this anymore, Mom. I don't want this boring, bland-ass woman to be my mom. You're so lame. I can't believe it. Mom, I need you to do me a favor and just go get plastic surgery right away. You can't look like that around me. Wait, what? Why so suddenly? What's going on? What the hell were you thinking, Mom? Showing up at our open classroom day like that? All of my friends' moms were so beautiful and their clothing was all fancy and done well. Their makeup was also super perfect and then you had to go and show up as my mom. You realize that you're probably the only person in the world that would show up in a boring old dress like that, right? Do you realize how embarrassed I was when you showed up? Everyone in the classroom will be laughing and talking about how my mom is so lame for years to come. Are you seriously that upset because I showed up in a suit and no caked on makeup? What do you mean, that upset? Yes, I'm upset because it's a huge deal, mom. This is important. If you're ugly, then all of my friends will look at me and say that I'm the girl with an ugly mom. Don't you get it? Ugh, you're so lame. I don't think there's anyone in that classroom that would make fun of you for what I'm wearing to your open classroom. Besides, I was wearing a suit because I just had an important meeting at work and I didn't have time to get changed. It's not like I normally wear a suit when I'm just out and about. Mom has got to go back to work anyway after I swing by and look at your open classroom. There's no point in me changing out of my clothes and then going back into a suit to go back to work. Ugh, I hate this, Mom. I can't believe that my own mother won't take off work for one single day when her own daughter has open classroom day. My mother prefers her stupid desk job over her own flesh and blood. I'm seriously just so sick and tired of having this terrible mother. It's so sad. All of my friends' moms are stay-at-home moms who always look after their family instead of work. Family is their top priority, so they don't go outside and work when they could be raising their own kids. That's what they all tell me. You realize that family is my number one priority too, right? That's why I'm working hard every day to make sure that you have a place to eat and sleep, clothes to wear, and a phone to use to text your friends. Yes, you cannot work and stay at home to take care of the house to make sure your family has a clean house, but taking care of your family can be done by going outside of the house with a job to make money so that your family can keep living the life it wants. That's all the same. What? I've never heard such a terrible excuse. You don't need to go out and work for money for this house to keep existing. You just want to leave. And let's be real. It's not like you actually make a lot of money anyway, Mom. Stop acting like you're this amazing breadwinner and I'm allowed to get the newest iPhone every season. What the hell are you saying to your own mother? You want to know why I know? We have a super great dad who is really incredible at cooking. Our house would be perfectly fine with just dad's restaurant. We don't need your stupid pocket change from your stupid job. Recently, he's been featured on some incredible magazine too. That's how famous his cooking is. Yeah, you're right about that. And his sales records have been incredible so far. I agree. Maybe you're right. We don't need my income from my job. It's really just a small addition to our house. Then I want you to quit your job and just stay at home like the other moms. Just take care of things at home. Be a stay-at-home mom. Quit your stupid job and do all of the things around the house so I don't have to do anything. Also, I want you to get plastic surgery and get a lot better at your makeup because, oh my god, as it stands, you're just an embarrassment to me when you show up. Hey, Hilda. I have to say, I really like my face the way it is right now and I really love the office that I work in. I love my job. Yes, maybe I work full time and yes, I leave the house, but that doesn't mean that I've skipped out on anything at the house. I've taken care of everything around the house. Are you sure you're not okay with how things are now? You really want it to change? Of course I want it to change. You keep saying family is the most important thing to you, that it's priority number one. Well, your priority number one is asking you to do something, so listen to her wishes. Your own daughter is saying that she's sad and upset because her boring and lame mom is embarrassing her at school. Do you understand? If you're my mom, you should just shut your face and listen to everything that she has to ask of you. Hilda. Also, I want this to be clear. 
I'm saying all this for your own good, Mom. You should really be thanking me that I'm being this honest with you. Imagine if you just kept this up and you were just this boring, bland lady who's just got, like, no makeup skills and is quickly aging. Dad is seriously gonna just go for that other lady that's working at his restaurant. You remember that new girl that started working there part-time? You won't be able to say shit back to him when he ends up divorcing you because you're just choosing to remain an ugly old hag. Wait, what are you talking about? Wait, hang on. You're seriously going to tell me that you haven't figured it out yet? Haven't you seen how much Dad dresses up recently? He's been doing his best to look really good every single day he goes to work. You want to know why he does that? It's because he's busy bumping uglies with the new part-time worker that he just hired. I'm pretty sure they're dating, too. She's super cute and petite, and she works hard, too. Honestly, she's just better than you. And how old was she again? I think she was 26, right? She's literally like almost an entire generation younger than you. Kind of makes sense why Dad would be head over heels for her. Can't really blame him, can you? You're kidding, right? You're just being hurtful. I thought that he was just trying to be a little more fancy for the magazines. I didn't realize that he was having an affair. What the hell? Yeah, exactly. So let me give you my advice. You need to drop the stupid job and start getting your plastic surgery done right away. If you don't become the super mom that we need you to be, then you're going to lose your seat as mother to the new cute and improved mom. Damn it, Joseph. Talk to me. Is it true that you're dating the new girl at work, Sarah? I just found out about this and this better not be real. You need to talk to me right now. What? When did you find out about this? How did you find out? Oh my god, Joseph. So it's true. You're actually going out with Sarah. What the hell? I cannot believe that you are out playing hooky with some random girl at work when you literally have a wife and a child at home. And to make things even worse, you were having an affair with someone you hired to work with you. How could you possibly sleep with her? I'm... I'm so sorry. Our store was finally gaining traction, too. How could you do such a thing? You're going to ruin it all. You better not get full of yourself just because some magazines and TV shows are all running to interview you. You're still the same husband that I married a while ago. Here's what you need to do right away. You need to break off everything with Sarah. Don't keep this affair going. Actually, you know what? You need to go ahead and fire her right away. Don't let her keep working there. She's a risk. She's starting to have a really negative effect on our daughter. Have you spoken to her recently? Uh, break it off with her? Oh, come on, Carla. You're really gonna try and get between our true love? I've never fallen for anyone this hard. What? Are you being serious? You're gonna be talking about falling for some young girl when you are literally texting your own wife? I'm sorry, Carla. I can't. I have no intention of breaking off anything with Sarah. I'm actually considering moving in the opposite direction, actually. I want to break it off with you, to be honest. That would be the best for me. Let's get a divorce. Sarah currently has my child. She's pregnant and I know that child is mine, so yeah, we're gonna have kids together. What? Are you being serious right now? Tell me you're lying. You actually got her pregnant? I can't ask her to terminate the pregnancy. I would never ask her to get an abortion. Plus, the more important thing is that I really love her from the bottom of my heart. I can't just let that go. So please, Carla, I'm asking you nicely. I'm begging you to let me get a divorce with you. Please, let's get a divorce. I want to be her family. I want her to be my wife from now on until forever. You're lying, right? Please tell me you're kidding. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that you're dumping me for the new girl that you met at your workplace? Is that what you're saying? I've done nothing but support you this whole time. I've done my best to be the best wife I could to you. Even when the store wasn't doing well, I was there for you. I never left your side. Who was there for you, supporting you when you were depressed because your store just kept 
being in the negatives, hmm? Tell me, who was it? I really do thank you from the bottom of my heart, Carla. You have been incredible. I really want to thank you because you're right, you've done nothing but support me this far. But I'm sorry. Going forward, I want her to be my rock, and I want to be hers. I want the relationship I have with you to be replaced with her. I want to become the happiest man alive with her, not you. Do you understand what I'm saying, Carla? Oh my god, you're serious. I'll go get the divorce papers from the city office tomorrow. You don't have to worry about a thing. Once you've had some time to really organize your thoughts and agree to everything, go ahead and sign the papers and give them to me. Oh. My. God. I heard from Dad. He told me everything. Apparently, you are going to get a divorce, right? I'm so glad that you two aren't going to be together anymore. And you won't be my mom. The best part about all of this is that I literally predicted this whole series of events happening right before they actually happen. I'm such a genius. What the hell are you laughing about, Hilda? How can you be so insensitive? Your own father was having an affair. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's no joke. He cheated on your mom. It's been an entire night and I really just can't let this go. This is actually the worst thing that has ever happened to me. How am I supposed to get over it? Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you think Dad is in the wrong? You really need to get your head checked out if you think it's his fault. Besides, it's your fault for being cheated on. I mean, seriously, you really should look in the mirror. You need to take a big look in the mirror, like I said, and start feeling guilty for not being more of an appealing woman for Dad. You really can't blame him. What the hell did you just say to me? I literally told you yesterday, Mom. Don't say that no one warned you about this. You can't just be this boring, bland mom. You need to be more attractive. Let's look at the facts. Some random old lady who's pretty ugly and refuses to use any kind of makeup versus a very young mom and cute woman who takes care of herself. Of course dad is gonna choose Sarah. Are you serious right now? No man in his right mind would ever choose you. You're being so terrible right now, Hilda. You're gonna sit there and say that mom is in the wrong for everything, huh? Blame everything on me? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. So pack your shit and get the hell out already. Why are you still here? No one needs you at this house anymore. You're just a used up old hag. Goodbye. Wait, what? Get the hell out? Hang on a second. Are you telling me that you're not gonna be coming with me when I leave the house? I'm leaving alone? What? Hang on, hang on. Are you being serious? You really thought that I would leave the house with you? Of all the people? Don't worry, Mom. I've taken you the liberty of taking the divorce papers to the city office. I took it this morning all by myself. Oh, and just so you know, I made sure that Dad would have full custody of me. You're never going to get to see me again, and I'm so glad I don't have to see you. I'm going to be living a new and amazing life with Sarah from now on. Woo! I'm so excited. What? You hang on just a moment, young lady. You just said that you already went to turn in the divorce papers to the city office? I read that right? Yeah. When I got home from school, I saw the divorce papers sitting on the living room table. You really should be better about hiding your private life stuff. It looked like you and Dad already signed it and it was all ready to go and everything. So I did what I could as an excellent daughter and just went to the city office a second ago and submitted it for you. You should be thanking me. You're kidding, right? You're just messing with me like usual. The divorce papers that I signed this morning, the fact that his signature was already on the papers too, means that he must have came home sometime during lunch just to come sign the papers. I don't believe what's happening. Let's be real, Carla. Things like this are much better if you just get it over quickly. You can't just let it drag on. I am so excited to see what Dad says when he comes home. He must eventually be overjoyed to see that the papers are turned in. I'm going to brag to him that his lovely daughter went and turned in the divorce papers early for him. Honestly, maybe Dad and Sarah will both be super happy that their lovely daughter was just so kind for them. Hey, Hilda. 
Let me ask you one more time. You're really sure that you're going to be staying with Dad? You're not going to be leaving the house with me? You need to tell me that you're going to stay with Dad and his stupid mistress. That's what you want? You're not going to have any regrets about this, are you? I'm asking you one last time. Why the hell would I regret this at all, you freaking idiot? I won't have any regrets. If anything, I'm ecstatic about this whole divorce. I don't think I've been this happy for a really long time. Sarah has always been incredibly kind and she's super cute, so honestly, I've always been a huge fan of her. She's just the most amazing woman. It's been like a dream come true. If she becomes my new mom, could you imagine how much I could brag about a cute mom like her? I can just brag to all of my friends about how much of an amazing mom I have. They won't be able to say anything back to me. Okay, I understand, Hilda. I don't need your bland and lame ass as a mom. You're just useless to me in this family. No one needs you, so pack your shit and get the hell out. I already have a really cute and young replacement mom, so don't let the door hit you on the way out. Bye. Understood loud and clear. This mom, who isn't actually your real mom, will be leaving. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. I'll be sure to take all of my belongings and get out of the house as soon as possible. Don't worry. I should probably go to the city office and make sure that the divorce papers have successfully been submitted and accepted before I leave, huh? Wouldn't want to not get a divorce at this point. I'll just go somewhere else to find a place to live real quick. It shouldn't take me that long to move out of the house and be out of your hair. I'm not going to be going home ever again, so you can just go ahead and gather all of mom's belongings and throw it away or sell it or whatever you like. You do what you want with it. Wait, hang on just a second though, mom. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, not my real mom? I need you to understand what you're talking about when you say that you're not my real mom. Is that some kind of riddle? No, there's no riddle there, sweetheart. It just means that we're not related at all. I'm not your mother. I really thought that I did my best for you. I thought that I raised you right, but alas, I guess it didn't work out, huh? Can't beat blood. I think that there really is something that you can't get past when you're not just really biologically mother and daughter, you know? My real daughter would never be this way. But I mean, what's nice about all of this is that I don't have to pay for any kind of child support, so I feel much better about cutting off needless weight. What are you talking about, not related? This is the first time I heard you say anything about that. You're just saying that to yank my chain. I don't understand what you're talking about at all. Honestly, if you want to know more about where you came from, you can just talk to your dad. I don't want anything to do with it. Alright, I gotta go now. I'm gonna get ready for my new and amazing life without your stupid cheating father. Hey, I talked to dad. Is it true that I'm not your real daughter? Am I really the child of some random woman when dad was having an affair? Tell me the truth or so help me I will lose my mind. Ah. So you went and asked your father, huh? Didn't take too long. I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous, dear, but I promise you that that is the whole truth. You're the child of some random hookup. That's the truth. That's the whole reason that Dad opened up his own restaurant to begin with. It wasn't some kind of random dream. Wait, what? Oh, wait, hang on. He didn't tell you about that story, huh? Sorry, I think I got a little too carried away with myself. Oh well cat's out of the bag now. Your father was a terrible man and had an affair with someone that he worked with back at his old store. When she got pregnant, the whole store was just this giant storm of who did it what and who's responsible for what. To put a long story short, your father started his own store because he was fired from his old company for sleeping with one of his employees. So, pretty much the same reason he's getting a divorce now. Are you being serious right now? And then after you were born, that woman who gave birth to you? Yeah, she bolted real fast. She was nowhere to be found and we were left with you. Oh, and she did leave a note with you and a smelly diaper. I think it said something like, I don't want this child. Please take good care of her. Goodbye. I don't remember exactly. That's why we took you in and we raised you as our own. I actually did my best to raise you as my own, like I said before. The child of the mistress that my husband had slept with causing him to lose his job. A brand new store that your father had just opened like two months earlier. 
Honestly, it was so incredibly busy back then, I don't even really remember anything that happened. It was all just a huge blur, and before I knew it, he cheated it again. The- but- what the hell? So you're telling me that I was just some child whose actual biological mother just abandoned entirely? I was an unwanted child? I mean, yeah, that's one way you can put it. I'm not sure I would want to be so harsh on you, but... Of course, at the time, we both considered getting a divorce. It wasn't like we were just so okay with everything and we moved on. But you know what? I promised that I would do what I can for the rest of my life with this man and that I wouldn't just let go. I made a promise to him and myself. That's why I said, okay, let's take you in and raise you as our daughter. I knew that I had to do this. And that's why I decided that we would try again at this whole marriage thing. And I really did my best to make this whole thing work too. I did my best to support you and love you and care for you. And I did my best to support the store and the house too. There was never a day that I didn't prioritize my child or family first. But who knew the result of all that hard work and effort is this. My own daughter hating me and my husband having an affair with some random woman. Oh, mom, I want you to get along with dad and Sarah, okay? You make sure everything stays smooth. Oh, and of course, you have to take care of the baby that's gonna be born real soon. You gotta get along with it too. Don't just let it go. All right, good luck. Have a good life. Wait, hang on, Mom. Just one second. Um, you know, about that. Would it be alright if I just go with you, Mom? I really have thought about it and think that it'd be better to be with you. What? Why the sudden change of heart, dear? You finally got what you wished for. A cute and young mom, right? I'll take my ugly ass and leave you all alone, since that is what you all seem like you want. You literally told me to get my lame, ugly, and boring ass out as soon as possible, remember? You said there was no use for someone like me in that household. Actually, um, I want to tell you the truth. Dad told me that I needed to get out of the house and that I have no choice to stay with them. That he was going to start a new family and I was just in the way. What? I actually heard from Dad a second ago. He told me about the baby that's in Sarah's belly. I didn't know about it till literally 20 minutes ago. He just told me out of the blue. He says that it was a girl, and I was so excited that I have a cute mom that's young, and I would even be getting a younger daughter to come with that. What a great deal, right? But Dad talked to me after that, and he said... He said that he wants to live with his real family, and real family only. So he wanted me to pack my things and get ready to leave the house because I'm unwelcome. He said that Sarah actually doesn't like me at all because I was born from some random woman that she didn't know, and that he's going to prioritize her wishes. Then he said that I have a few choices, but the smartest thing that I could do for myself is just to get out of the house with you. Oh my god, they're actually one of the most rotten people. They're going to push this unrelated child onto me? After all that they've done to me? Yeah, we'll see about that. Right? I'm agreeing with you. How could they possibly do me like that? Just chase me out of the house. I'm dad's child too, you know. He can't just kick me out over some random woman. So please, would it be alright if I just follow you? I need somewhere to go and I really don't know where else I can go. Would that be okay? Yeah, of course not. You can't come with me. You better not come and show up at my house either. I'm not gonna let you anywhere near me. Wait, what? Oh, come on. Don't like you're just an innocent little victim here, you little rotten shit. You have no right to be mad at those two either. You're just as bad as them. You were the one that told me that it can't be helped that Dad chooses the younger girl. I remember what you said. You were pretty disgusting. In other words, this is the exact same thing that happened to me. Dad loves the unborn baby that he's having with his mistress more than he would ever love you. Do you understand what I'm saying, dear? You're being thrown away again. He would much rather prefer this adorable unborn baby that he's having with his lovely little mistress than this bitch of a middle school brat that is nothing but headaches for everyone. W why would you be so mean to me, Mom? I've literally been your daughter for 15 years. And how could you tell your own daughter to not show up at your house? How could you? Where the hell am I supposed to go? 
Dad hates me, Sarah hates me, you're telling me to stay the hell away. How am I supposed to do anything without my parents when I'm literally only in middle school? What am I supposed to do? I mean, I don't know what to tell you, dear. I don't have any shape of or form of custody of you, and to make things even better, I'm not related to you at all either. The only other way that I see you existing at all is convincing Dad as best as you can. You can't come to me. I'm not helping you. No matter how hard I convince him, it's going to be hell. Even if he says yes, I still have to deal with Sarah. Think about it. I have to live with a dad that doesn't want me there, and Sarah, who doesn't even like me because I'm just some random child. Are you seriously not going to help me at all, Mom? You're just going to abandon me and leave me stranded? Uh, yeah. Of course I'm going to do that. I've done my absolute best raising you for 15 long, hard years, but at this point, I don't think there's any shred of love for responsibility left in me for you. Okay. This is it for me, Hilda. Goodbye. Have a nice life. Oh my god, Carla! What the hell should I do? The store is in a huge crisis right now. I can't do anything about it. As people stop showing up entirely in this month, we're just going to be bleeding money. I don't know how to stop this. Until just recently, it was just reservation after reservation and the store was full literally every single day. Now, there are no reservations at all every day, and I don't think I've even seen a single customer for the longest time. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh no, that's not good. What are you going to do? You even have a baby on the way too. What are your plans for the baby? I'm sure you're going to need a lot of money real soon. Why are you talking to me like it's just someone else's problem, huh? How could you be this cold to me? All this has to do with you too, doesn't it? You're responsible for this mess. I have a hunch that you're just running around town, yapping away about how terrible this restaurant is, and slandering it. That's why everyone stopped showing up. What? That's the only explanation for this whole thing. There's no other reason that anyone would just stop showing up all of a sudden like this. You're just pissed off that you were rejected and thrown away, so you're just trying to get in the way of my success as a restaurant owner. Yeah, you must think that I'm bored or something. I would never have that much time on my hands to take revenge or anything. The only thing that I am guilty of is that I had to go around telling people that I got a divorce with you. I think the only groups of people that I told were my company, because I had to, and my parents back at home. No one else. Oh wait, I completely forgot. It shouldn't be that big of a deal though. I told all the parents and guardians over at Hilda's school. They all know too. Wait, what? You told all the parents and guardians about our divorce? D -d Did you really need to tell everyone that much? Why would you do that? That is absolutely the reason I don't have any more customers showing up at my store. How could you possibly just run around and tell all these people about our business? These are local people. Wait, wait, wait. Don't get this twisted. Calm down. I didn't tell all of the parents and guardians at Hilda's school just because I was pissed off and hoped that they, by telling me, they wouldn't go to your restaurant and you'd suffer forever. I did it because it was literally written in the school rule book. I just had to obey the rule because you know how I am. Just a stickler for rules and whatnot. I really had no choice. What? What are you talking about, Carla? Reporting a divorce is in the school rule book? Do you remember how I used to be an officer over in the PTA at Hilda's Middle School? I'm pretty sure I told you that I was busy often because of that. But we're gonna be getting a divorce. And since we're getting a divorce, and I won't be having any custody of Hilda, I had to quit the PTA, you know. I had no choice. And boy, you wouldn't believe how difficult and annoying it is being a part of the PTA. The bureaucracy. Anytime that any member, especially an officer such as myself, has to leave the PTA in the middle of the season, I have to report the reason to all of the other members. And if I don't have the permission of the other members to resign my position as an officer of the PTA, they won't let me resign. That's the rules, you know. Can't be helped. What the hell is all that? Yeah, 
so I had no real choice in any of it. My hands were tied. I had to tell all of the lovely guardians of the PTA that we were getting a divorce. Oh, don't worry though. I made sure that I didn't tell them about the whole affair thing though. I kept that part to myself. But, you know how these things are. People just somehow figure things out and connect the dots. Before you know it, everyone already knows everything. But, no. So you're telling me that most of the people in this area know that we're getting a divorce? How could this happen to me? Wait, hold on a second. Does that mean they know about my affair and girlfriend's pregnancy too? How much does everyone know? Do they all know about everything that's going on? I mean, if I were in your position, I would definitely assume that that was the case, yes? That's probably why everyone stopped going to your restaurant. That would be my guess. I don't know anyone in their right mind that would want to eat the food from a chef that cheats on his wife, that he has supported him forever and gets a girl pregnant. Could you imagine what might even be in the food? Ugh, kind of gross to even think about. Damn it! Damn it all to hell! Everything was going so well! I had my future secured! Even my sales were reaching new records every single day! I had nothing to worry about for a while! Carla, you need to listen to me and listen to me carefully. Help me now! I'm going to be having a child real soon and I cannot have this restaurant in this condition! I'm literally going to wither and die! Whoa, what? Why the hell do I have to do something about it? I don't get where that idea came from. I don't give a rat's ass about your stupid restaurant or what happens to it. If anything, I wish it just disappears and you sink with your ship. Shut the hell up! You realize that I had to take on Hilda because you were the one that rejected her, right? I asked her politely to take you on and instead I had to take her. You know how much she cost? She's always asking for the latest and newest iPhone, and she's spending all this money on her stupid makeup. Come to think of it, she's literally your daughter too, so you need to work hard to help me out. Don't just throw all the responsibility on me. What? If anything, you better pay up for Hilda's child support. I'll give you a real quick estimate on how much, considering she's going to be attending a private high school and going to college real soon. I'll need to make some monthly payments for tuition. Give me, like, a thousand a month. Oh, don't you even get smart with me, shithead. You better change your tune real fast. Why in the name of God do I have to pay and take care of a child that I didn't give birth to? I don't even have any kind of custody of her anymore. You know what you need to do is go find the woman that you got pregnant and tell her to be paying you a thousand dollars because it's her child. You raised her for 15 long years. I know that means something to you. You're basically her real mother. I'm sure she feels that way too, so stop acting stupid. The least you can do for us is pay for her child support every month. I know you can. Oh man, you really can't be helped, can you? You're just a lost cause. Are you actually reading what you type, or are you just texting whatever you remember from what you dreamt of this morning? What the hell is that high and mighty attitude you're giving me? How dare you? Besides, you know that Hilda is also in a whale of trouble, no thanks to you, right? It's not just me either. You were supposed to keep the whole not related thing to yourself until she became an adult and then you had to go and tell her. How could you break our promise like that? Everything is completely screwed up now because you decided that it would be nice to just tell her everything. It's your fault. She hasn't gone to school for over a week now, and she's hanging around a really uh, shady crowd of people. You know, the kind that hang around the skate park late at night. I mean, yeah. I'm not really surprised to hear that. If you don't have a sense of belonging at home, then it makes sense that she's going to be finding the next nearest place that she can find someone to want her. Lord knows what she does at those parks. Oh, please, I'm begging you. I need you to help me out of this. If we can restart the store and get it going again, everything will just work itself out. That's all I need to get done. First off, let's get the store sales going up again. 
Once the sales are back to where they used to be, then our lives will be much more stable. And then I'll feel much more comfortable dealing with Hilda and having the difficult conversations that I need to have with her. That's why I'm begging you right now. Just help me out. Just this once. Yeah, that's a solid and definite no from me. Stop trying to drag some stranger into the mess that you created. You deserve everything coming to you, and I hope your daughter goes down with you. But... Let's be real. The only reason that there are no more customers coming to your store is because you lack the skills as a chef. If you were a chef that can really run his own store with his own skills, then... Then you could just use your cooking to make people have to come back to your store for more. What? Oh my god. I'm saying that if you cooked actually amazing food, then the people will go back to you, no matter what the chef has done in the past or what he is now. But the fact that there are no people coming back to your restaurant speaks more to your cooking than it does to what you did in your private life, or in the kitchen with your mistress. What the hell? Alright, good luck with everything though. You were seriously the worst, and I mean that as a father and a husband. But hey, who knows? Maybe your cooking is actually decent. Joseph's store is still doing pretty terrible, and no one has shown up to come and eat at his store. Oh, and the interviews completely went away as well, so he got no good publicity coming outside of the local areas. He's just been bleeding money this whole time, so people are really counting down the seconds before he has to close up shop. Oh, and Hilda? She's doing great things with awful people, becoming every parent's worst nightmare. At the moment, Joseph's restaurant parking lot is her headquarters. She's gathered a large group of delinquents to hang around, which is probably not helping his case with getting more customers either. I mean, who would want to go to eat at a store where there's a bunch of thugs in a parking lot? However, it's not like Joseph can do anything about it either. He's too terrified to say anything because there are way too many of the delinquents there to fight. At the moment, that whole family is just being treated by all the locals as a terrible cancer to the area, and they're all being avoided. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to break this to you, Stephanie. You know the wedding dress we bought for tomorrow's wedding? I just caught news that it was apparently torn apart and ripped to shreds. Wait, what do you mean the wedding dress is torn apart? I just got a call from the wedding venue like two seconds ago, honey. They were calling me up in arms saying that the dress that you were supposed to wear for tomorrow's wedding ceremony has been torn into pieces. They even said that the dress is too torn up to be repaired at all, too. It's just like foobar. What the hell? No. But then what about tomorrow's wedding? What are we supposed to do about that? We can't find another dress that quick, can we? Well, unfortunately, that's probably the only option we have left at this point. We've got to find another one. But tomorrow is literally the day of the wedding. What the hell are we supposed to do? The staff at the wedding venue told me they are working hard to find another dress for us as well. They're also going to be looking around the other wedding dress stores in the area to see if there are any that can be used in place of the torn up one. You realize that's already like half past four in the afternoon, right? There's no way you can rush that. No matter how quickly they find a replacement, there's not a chance in the world that they're going to be able to get it checked and ready for tomorrow. It needs to be adjusted and tailored to my body too. It's not like a regular dress. I can just go buy from Hot Topic, you know? Yeah, I kind of figured. I'm sorry for all this. But I think the only option we have left is to cancel the wedding outright. I don't know what else we can do. That's so unfortunate. We got so much stuff ready for tomorrow from like a year ago. How could this happen? Why the hell was the dress torn apart in the first place anyway? Did they mention any reason why the dress was messed up? Was it some kind of freak accident or something? Or was it something way more malicious? Like someone intentionally ripping it? Yeah, I don't really know anything about that yet, but I'm going to be asking them for sure. Give me a little bit. 
But it looks like the wedding dress venue is also in a sort of panic because they were also pretty surprised to see what happened to the wedding dress. Anyway, I'm gonna go to the wedding venue right now and see what's what. I'll take a look at the dress myself and talk to some of the managers to see what's going on. Yeah, I did it. I freaking did it. You know what this means, right? You're not gonna be able to wear that pretty little wedding dress that you picked out oh so carefully. Wait, what? I cut it up like Jack the Ripper. Honestly, it's probably a masterpiece at this point. A work of art. No one can fix it up. I'm sure you've already received news about what happened, right? You have to have heard from the wedding venue about that state of your little wedding dress is in. Wait, wait, wait. You're talking about my wedding dress. You tore it up? Wait, are you seriously telling me right now that you're the one behind all this, Becky? You did it? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you, Steph. I did it. I made my way to the wedding venue and made sure that it was irreparable. I must have gone through like four axo knives. But why? You wouldn't believe how light the security is at a wedding venue. I honestly had a more difficult time getting through a baseball game with a bottle of water. When I told them that I was just touring around different wedding venues, they had no hesitation letting me in to look around without any kind of escort. And the staff? Oh man, you chose a great venue, Stephanie. They seem to really want to help me out when it comes to choosing my venue. I didn't even have to say anything about the dress at all. They just showed me out of the blue. No questions asked. They said, this is the dress that we are planning on using tomorrow. We offer many dresses like this. How perfect could things be? It's like you wanted me to tear up your dress. Thanks to them, I had no issues cutting it up to my heart's content. You should honestly be more upset for the security than me. They could have done better protecting your valuable little dress. You're seriously the worst. How could you do this to me? No, seriously. I want you to tell me why you thought this was an acceptable thing to do to me. Why? You realize that tomorrow is literally our special wedding day, right? The day that we set in stone and I've been planning for over a year now? Oh, come on, Steph. You can't seriously tell me that you don't know. You know why. I just don't like you. I actually despise you more than anyone I can think of. Wait, you don't like me? I can't believe that an ugly bitch like you is going to be marrying my adorable and amazing older brother. I really just don't like that you're taking him away from me, so, yeah. That's why I tore up your stupid dress. I wanted to make sure that you wouldn't be able to go through with your stupid little wedding. That's why you literally snuck into the wedding venue and ruined the wedding dress? That one little reason? Because you thought that I was stealing your older brother from you? What do you mean, one little reason? It's a very important and serious reason for me to do what I did. If you were at least, like, model level pretty, then I would have been fine with it, but you're actually kind of ugly too. Like, my first time I saw you, my immediate reaction was ew. Some random average bland ass bitch is not on the same level as my older brother. Scratch that. You two aren't even on the same realm or same world. You're just not good enough for me. A average and bland ass bitch? Seriously? You remember that I've been telling you this from a long time ago, right? It's not like I've been kept this hidden from you. I said that if you want to marry my older brother, then you really needed to work harder to become a better, less average and bland woman. My older brother is seriously one of the most attractive people on the planet. You realize how proud I am of being my older brother, right? He's literally never had any period in his life where he has had no girlfriend. He's more kind than any person you will ever meet. He's literally the best older brother anyone could ever ask for. But his fiance is this ugly. And just mundane, boring woman? I just couldn't bring myself to believe what was happening. I refuse. I will not let this kind of thing happen. Not on my watch. No, sir. I really do understand how much you love your older brother and how close you were to him when you two were growing up. He's told me all about it and so have you. But you should be happy for the person that you love to be able to find his own happiness, right? That's the grown-up thing you can do for someone you love. 
Wait, what? You know, to you, I might be that average mundane boring ass bitch, but I'm not that kind of person in his eyes. I work hard every single day to make sure that I'm a woman that is worthy of calling myself his wife. I don't just sit around and do nothing while trying to be prettier. And your brother, Todd, actually has proposed to me to marry me. Do you understand what I'm saying? No one held a gun to his head. He wants to marry me. What the hell are you talking about? What? Are you trying to say that you're just average and bland but you're loved or something? What is this? Some kind of bragging? You're actually kind of gross, aren't you? You like to make sure that you're better above everyone else, huh? I didn't expect that. Wait, what? So as long as you're being loved, then nothing else matters, right? You only care about what happens to you. There's someone on the other side of that that's having to hold back so much and is lonely and sad because of you and your stupid shenanigans. But I guess you don't give a crap about that person, right? That's what you're saying? You're just selfish and don't care about others? You want me to just spend the rest of my life and my birthdays all alone with no older brother to buy me a cake. That's what you're suggesting, right? What are you talking about spending your birthdays all alone? What? Don't be coy with me, Stephanie. I see right through all your stupid lies. I know as ugly as you are, you're not a complete idiot. You know for sure what I'm talking about. You should know that I have the same exact birthday as you. So that means I would never be able to celebrate my birthday because he'd only celebrate yours. Wait, what? Hang on. Are you being serious right now? Let me tell you something about my older brother. He has always celebrated my birthday more than anyone else's in this world. Everyone I knew has always been amazed at how incredible his birthday parties for me were. He would spend the whole day with his adorable younger sister because it was a once in a year event and nothing else was really important to him. But it all started to change after he started going out with your boring and bland self. He suddenly stopped doing any and all special events for me. Why the hell do you have the same birthday as me? That's totally unfair and unjust. I don't like it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I think. I'm not sure what to say. But just so you know, I really didn't know about your birthday. I had no idea that we both had identical birthdays. Otherwise, I would have done better. Just so you know, Todd never talked to me about your birthday either. I don't know why he didn't tell me. You're just pissing me off when you apologize, so don't ever apologize to me again. It doesn't matter how much you apologize to me. My sad past with birthdays that I didn't spend with my adorable sweet older brother will never come back. I'm just gonna have that forever. Uh... After he started dating you, my brother just completely changed. He's not the same kind of older brother that I used to know when he was single. You've completely changed him. Before, it wasn't just birthdays either. Even during Christmas, he would hang out with his little sis to make sure she wasn't lonely. But look at what's happening now. But after he started dating you, he has just completely stopped coming with me at all. Not one time has he just come back and said, Hey, let's go somewhere together. If anything, he's just been putting all the time together on the back burner. It just doesn't work out. You realize that this year's happy birthday was just a stupid emoji that he sent through a text message, right? I didn't even get to see him this year. Oh yeah, that's because he was proposing to me on my birthday. We were all busy that time of year. Now it all makes sense. I think he was even telling me about how busy he was about the proposal too. He said that he had to get ready for all the reservations and getting all the extra things. He's never treated me like this before. Never. Only after he started dating you has he started treating me this poorly. After he started dating you, it's just been like this the whole time. He's just been pushing me off, never going out with me. He just prioritizes you instead of me and he always says that he'll deal with me another day or rain check for our special little getaways. I've been getting hurt this whole time. Don't you understand what I'm saying? That's why I decided to take it upon my own hands to make sure that your dress was torn up into pieces so that you could maybe begin to experience the kind of pain that I experienced. I know what you're saying now. I really do. I understand that you're very frustrated about the whole situation. 
But you do understand that there are certain things you can and can't do, right? And that what you did was definitely pretty high on the list of things you can't do? You really cannot go around tearing up wedding dresses literally the day before of the wedding. Do you realize the amount of stress this puts on us and everyone that we have invited to the wedding? Shut the hell up, Stephanie. You shut your mouth right now. That torn up dress is just an expression of the condition that my heart is currently in. Don't you understand? I want you to take a good look at that dress and really take it all in so that you and my brother can both really see how much you two have hurt me and how torn up my heart currently is. So, how was it? Did you get to take a look at your stupid torn up wedding dress in all of its pitiful glory? Yeah, the wedding staff sent me a few photos of the dress and my gosh, you've truly outdone yourself this time, haven't you? I honestly would go beyond all torn up too. This is way beyond that. You've managed to successfully turn the wedding dress into a useless drape. There's not a chance in hell that anyone is going to be able to repair that dress in time, not with it being torn up in that condition. Aw, that's too bad. I really must have outdone myself when it came to tearing up that dress. I should honestly be rewarded for my services. I was just so into tearing up that dress and making sure that you understand how upset I was that I don't even really remember what it looked like after I was done. Okay, enough with the games. What are you going to do? You realize that the wedding ceremony tomorrow is pretty much almost impossible to go through with no thanks to your little shenanigans, right? We haven't been able to find a replacement dress yet. You know that, right? We're still looking, but I'm not very hopeful that we'll find one in time. Well, 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 I feel so sorry for you. You must be feeling so upset right now. I guess that just means that tomorrow's wedding ceremony will just have to be canceled just like I wanted to, huh? Wow, I think I'll go grab some victory drinks. Yeah, you're right, it might be canceled now. But if it does come down to that, you're gonna be held responsible for all of this. You understand, right? So you're gonna be okay with all of that? What? Responsible for what? There's no way in hell I would take responsibility for all of this. What makes you think I'd actually take responsibility? You know that it's your fault for ruining the dress, right? If you didn't ruin our dress like you did, we would be perfectly fine going through with the wedding ceremony tomorrow. You need to take responsibility because that's the normal thing to do. It's your fault that you took my older brother from me. That's why I decided to ruin it for you. If you didn't do that, then you never would have ended up with a ruined wedding. Let me put it in simpler terms then. The wedding being canceled tomorrow is all your fault. You brought this all on yourself. I have no responsibility to take for it because you brought this on yourself. Do you get it? What the actual? Oh wait, hang on. I've just thought of something. If you're going to be canceling the wedding ceremony, I have a great idea what to do in place of your stupid little ceremony. Why don't we all celebrate me getting my job offer, huh? That would be a great party to have instead of your stupid little wedding ceremony. What? What are you talking about celebrating your job offer? Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you. I was actually offered a job for my first pit company. I did an interview and they were so quick to accept me. They must have really liked me. Of course, I reported right back to my older brother. I think I told him as soon as I got the call from them, but... He said that he was going to have a celebration for me, being able to find a job after you guys finished your stupid wedding. But if your wedding ceremony is going to be cancelled anyway, then we could probably go ahead and push my job offer celebration to the front of the long, right? What? Let me be real, you can't just cancel the wedding venue the day before you are scheduled to be having the wedding ceremony, right? Even I know that much. I'm sure they're already preparing all of the amazing food and presentations and whatnot, so why don't we just make sure it doesn't go to waste? Imagine all that hard work and effort just being thrown away just because of you and your stupid attempt to marry my brother. Let's just switch the celebration. We can celebrate my job offer and make sure that the job offer is the main focus of the celebration. Beck, congratulations on the job offer from Fine Midori. I'm going to be working so hard come this spring at the most incredible accessory design company in the area. Wait, what? I know that you don't want to cancel the wedding, but come on. Let's be real here. You need to get a grip if you think that wedding is still going to work. 
if you don't have a dress that you can wear to the wedding ceremony, you really don't have any choice but to cancel the whole wedding ceremony off, right? Honestly, you can just call off the engagement period if you want. That would be perfect. Just cancel your stupid wedding because your stupid dress was torn up to pieces and call off your stupid engagement because my older brother deserves a not-so-stupid bride. Okay then, I'll tell you what else we're gonna have canceled. Your job offer. Wait, what? I really did not expect this kind of coincidence to ever happen in real life, but who knew, huh? Whatever. I have to call the wedding venue and let them know that we're not going to be able to go through with the wedding. You're exactly right, Becky. We're not going to be able to go through with the wedding ceremony unless we have a wedding dress that I can wear to the wedding. After that, we have to contact the HR guys over at the company and let them know ASAP about what's going on. You have to be removed from all of the new and incoming new hires list because you will not be getting a job offer from that company. What? Removed? What are you talking about? Why are you rambling on about canceling the job offer and removing me from the list of new hires? Is it because I managed to piss you off by ruining your wedding dress and forcing you to cancel your wedding? You actually have no authority to do anything about my job offer. Once they send out the job offers, there's nothing that anyone can do to just take it back. Actually, I am exactly the person that can do something about that. I'm the CEO of Fine Midori. You probably won't believe me, but... What? You're the... You're the CEO? You really should have wisened up there, moron. You should probably remember the name of the CEO of the company that you wanted to work for. It's really not that big of a company at all. It's fairly small scale, so I thought I knew all of the employees. Wait, hold on. I guess it's on me too, huh? I should have been more careful to pick and choose which new hires we should hire for every season. I just let the HR guys handle all of it. I mean, I guess since I'm the business owner here, I should at least make sure to glance through the applications to see who I'm hiring, huh? W what? Wait, what? Hang on just a second. What? What the hell are you talking about? Are you being dead serious right now? Is the company that I got a job offer from seriously the company that you're the president of? There's no way, right? I'm sorry, but if you don't believe me, there's an easy way to find out. Just Google it yourself on the internet and you'll be able to find everything you need all on there. I'm not going to be able to hold your hand through this one because I'm in the middle of talking to my HR department while trying to cancel the wedding ceremony at the same time. Alrighty, we'll talk again later, Becky. By the way, you're not off the hook with the wedding ceremony either. You're going to have to take full responsibility for canceling my wedding ceremony. Stephanie, I am so sorry for my stupid bratty sister. I'm seriously beyond words right now. I actually just heard your voicemail. I cannot believe that Becky would do such a thing to my own fiancé's dress. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, Stephanie. It's okay, Todd. It's really not something you need to be apologizing for. Actually, I'm curious. Anyway, were you able to listen to the voicemail from start to finish? I want to call off the wedding, so I was really hoping that you would be able to go ahead and contact the people over at the venue. Just let them know we weren't able to find a dress in time so we can't go through. While you're handling that side, I'm going to be calling up all of the relatives on both of our sides to tell them that the wedding is going to be cancelled tomorrow. Wait, hold on just a second, Stephanie. Hold that thought. About the wedding ceremony, can you give me just a little bit more time so that we can see about maybe salvaging it? Just give me a little time. I really think I might have found a really nice dress for you to be able to wear tomorrow. I need to check the sizes and they're still checking the availability, but yeah. What? You think you might have found a replacement dress for me? Where in the world did you find that? Yeah, the people at the wedding venue worked really hard to gather as many different choices as they could for us. And then we all go together to try to see if there were any dresses that might be good for you. And I spent about half of the day just looking at different wedding dresses with the people over there. I found one dress that I really feel would look amazing on you. And I think you'll love it. It's very similar to our original dress, but dare I say, it might even be fancier than that one. 
I think the size is also pretty much spot on too, so there really shouldn't be any kind of extra adjustments necessary, you know? You should just be able to look at it and wear it tomorrow without having to try it on and get it fitted or anything. Wait, are you being serious right now? Yeah, I'm being nothing but serious. So if possible, I want you to come by the wedding venue right away. Is that possible? Come by so that we can have you try on the dress and check on the size of the dress. Uh, make sure there are no hiccups there. I really don't want to give up on tomorrow's wedding, Steph. I've been looking forward to this day for far too long. Thank you so much, Todd. Oh my gosh. I'll be heading over there right away. The design is seriously incredible, and it's just fancier than anything I could imagine, so I really think that you'll love the dress. Just let me know when you get there, okay? And like I said, I kind of feel bad for the dress that got torn up to bits, but if anything, I personally like this one better than the last one. I'm sure you'd look good in both, but I think I'm going to go as far as to say that it was some kind of miracle or destiny for all of this to happen so that we could stumble upon this dress. That's how pretty this dress really is. Well, now you've got my hopes up, Todd. I really hope this dress is all that you say it is because I'm excited now. Alrighty, I'll see you in a bit, sweetie. I'll call a cab right away and ask the driver to ignore as many lights as he can. You really did it, you stupid bitch! You went on and canceled my job offer, didn't you? And you're telling me that you're gonna be having your stupid wedding now? Screw you, you moron! I want you to let me into the wedding venue right this second. Stephanie, I know you're reading this. I can't believe you're actually trying to get in right now. I'm not gonna let you in, Becky. There's no chance. You're a dangerous person that is willing to get violent, as is evident with the torn up wedding dress. Honestly, I feel like you might try to come to tear my new one up after you found out about me canceling your job offer. How are you feeling about that, by the way? If that's what you're thinking right now, then you need to cancel the cancellation of the job offer right now. Do you hear me? That was my job that I wanted to get into the most. How could you do that to me? You don't understand what you've done to me. I want you to know that I've already canceled and turned down all of the other job offers, right? I literally have no other job leads anymore. And then you're gonna sit here and tell me that you're gonna cancel my job offer like this last second? Don't you pull this shit on me. Yeah, you can bitch and moan all you like, but I'm telling you right now, neither I or any of my employees would want to work with someone like you. And just so you know, what happens in my company is something that I can decide on my own. I'm going to decide who I have working here without anyone telling me otherwise. Y you realize this is illegal, right? You're just breaking all of the laws to do this to me. Just because you're the president doesn't mean you can take away job offers willy-nilly. I know my rights, and I'm telling you that this is not within your rights. If you don't undo this right, right this second, then I'm gonna be sure that everyone knows about your wrongdoings. Are you sure you're okay with that? Are you sure you can walk that walk? Or are you just spewing nonsense? If you're just saying random things that pop into your head, I want you to keep it to yourself because you're not gonna scare me into keeping you around my company. What? You're a CEO of a whole company and you don't even know about regular labor laws? Wow, you're way more stupid than I thought. When a company formally offers a job position to a potential employee, you've already signed away your right to take away that job offer. We've already signed a contract, essentially. You can't just cancel the job offer on your end. It's literally against the law. Haven't you picked up a newspaper? You have to have put a really good reason, or you really just can't rescind someone's job offer. And believe me, you don't have any legal viable reason to take away my job offer right now. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know about what is within my legal rights. Now I know I'm doing the right thing. I have something that happened that I personally believe is going to be legally justifiable and certificable to be called a good reason to rescind your job offer. I don't know. Maybe. The applicant is being arrested, so we have decided to rescind the job offer. 
I'm no lawyer, but I'm pretty sure if the applicant becomes a criminal, then it would be completely acceptable for the company to rescind any kind of job offer. What the hell did you just say? What are you talking about? Well, we actually just finished the wedding ceremony a little while ago. I've just been talking to all of my legal team and seen what to do. They suggested that I talk with the wedding venue since technically they're the legal victims here. You destroyed their property. So they were talking to Todd about what to do and... I'm sorry to tell you, but the wedding venue people have said that they want to go to the police and report everything you've done. And just so you know, Todd also specifically asked them to file as many charges against you as they possibly could, and I quote, put her away as long as possible. Oh, and I took the liberty of screenshotting all of our text messages and sending them over to Todd so that he could hand over all the messages to the wedding venue as evidence. What? Just so you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to be filing charges against you real soon. You know what comes right after this? The police are going to be paying you a nice little visit. I don't think it'll take them that long. You're going to have to take in taking responsibility for all the things that you've done this time around. I don't think you'll have a choice. You'll be way too busy dealing with the legal battle that you're not going to be able to handle trying to find a new job either. If anything, you should be thanking me that you'll be able to focus on your legal issues now. Wait, you're lying. My brother would never do such a thing to me. Are you being serious? Th the police? You're getting the police involved in all of this mess? I'm pretty sure this is all way too much, don't you think? All I did was just make a simple modification by using a knife to your dress. It was just one little dress. What the hell? Dude, just use your common sense. It's literally vandalism. You destroyed their property. If it was just a dress that I had bought and had the wedding venue hang on to, that's just against me and mine. But the dress that you decided to go full Jack the Ripper on? Yeah, that dress was the wedding venue's property, so that's not really in my control, is it? Y yeah but think about it. It's literally just a single dress. It's not that big of a deal, don't you think? I can't believe that this is what would get blown out of proportion. How would the police get involved in this mess? It's not even my fault if you think about it. The wedding venue management should have really be rethinking their security. If anything, I should be thanked for finding flaws in their security. Hold on. Explain that thought to me, Becky. B because if the management over at the wedding venue made sure to check my possessions and whatnot, th then I never would have been able to cut up the wedding dress at all. They really need to revamp their security. The security and the management both at the venue were way too easygoing. They really brought this upon themselves. If anything, you're the one that needs to be taking full responsibility for everything that happened. You're the one that takes the most responsibility for all of this. If you hadn't tried to marry my older brother, then none of this would have happened. My brother would still love me and you'd still be happy. You know that what the wedding venue would have? They would have a perfect dress for the next person who wanted to use it. I never would have touched the dress if it wasn't for you. Hey Becky, what the hell? Are you being serious right now? You really believe all that toxic shit you just texted? Huh? You aren't at all at fault for cutting up and tearing up the dress that the wedding venue owned. The people who are most responsible are the management at the wedding venue who didn't take their security serious and Stephanie for making you want to cut up the dress in the first place. Tell me, Becky, I want to know, are you seriously thinking that? I need to know how insane you are. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. What's going on? Wait. Am I talking to Stephanie right now? Or is this Todd? Okay, so what? It's your older brother texting. Explain to me how that changes anything you said. Are you going to suddenly accept everything and start rethinking your choices if you find out it was me? Oh, uh, no, uh... So, let's get back to the topic at hand. I want to know if what you said earlier was your honest-to-God opinion that you believe in or if you're just being emotional or something. Oh, and depending on how you answer this question, I'm going to start considering cutting off all ties with you for the foreseeable future. What? Are you serious? 
all ties? Yeah, no shit. Are you kidding me? I know that there is a lot less time that we get to spend with each other after I started going out with Stephanie. I'm not an idiot. I know that we spent more time before, but that's pretty normal considering we're both fairly old now, right? We're not kids anymore. It's totally normal. But then you had to go and do this crap. You're calling my fiance ugly and not good enough for me? Honestly, did you even say a single word or phrase that wasn't toxic? And on top of that, you lose your shit and start cutting up the dress that we were going to use for the wedding? You're insane! I don't want that kind of shitty person to be my younger sister. I don't want anyone like that in my life. Wait, hang on just a second, Todd. Don't just freak out on me like that, okay? Calm down. I don't want to hear you tell me that you don't want me like that. You have no idea how much pain I've been in. I was just a little sad, you know? I missed my older brother, and I missed all the nice little getaways we had together. So if you're just a little sad, then you're allowed to break several laws and go crazy? Cut up a several thousand dollar dress? It's not even your dress, it's someone else's. You're going to be forgiven just because you're a little sad when you've broken so many people's hearts <sighs> after they put their heart and soul into it. Uh, I mean, when you put it that way... I'm done. I'm going to call off this relationship with you starting today. Don't ever expect to talk to me ever again. I've already told our parents what's going on and what's going to happen. I told them that they need to cut off ties with you too and they've been totally okay with me cutting ties with you. You bet your ass that Stephanie, who was once on your side, is okay with it too. I don't like this, Todd. Don't say that. I don't want you to not like me anymore. You're my beloved and incredible older brother. I don't want you to just cut ties with me. You're going to make me sad. I'll make sure that I formally apologize to Stephanie. I'll write a note and everything. I swear. I'll even go as far as making a formal apology to the wedding venue people, and I'll make sure that I pay for all the damage that I have caused. Please forgive me. Are you some kind of stupid Becky? You're going to apologize to everyone who is involved in this and pay for the damages regardless of what I do. And here you are saying that you want to use that as a reason for me not to break all communication with you? How greedy are you? You really think that'll work? But, but Todd... Listen to me, Becky. From now on, you're going to spend a lot of time alone and think about everything that you've ever done. You're going to feel the guilt and take it all in. The dress costs a pretty penny too, by the way. It's not just a walk in the park. Expect to pay up several thousand dollars. You better pay the whole thing in full and then some too. You really need to feel the full extent of how much damage you've caused to people. You're kidding me, right? Hang on. You're not telling me that a wedding dress is really that expensive. I thought it was like a couple hundred bucks or something. You really didn't know? Just educate yourself. Most wedding dresses are going to cost you several tens of thousands of dollars. They're all over the place. What? A lot of people wear the same dress over and over, and that's the only reason that the dress is able to be rented out for a reasonable amount by your average person. <sighs> Lucky for you, though, our dress was special, so our rental was more closer to several thousand dollars. You're lying. You are so making this all up to mess with me, right? Hang on, how much am I going to be sued for? Tell me, Todd! No, I'm not going to tell you shit, Becky. Why the hell would I know how much the wedding venue is going to sue you for? Also, just so you know, our parents and I are definitely not going to help you out at all. You're going to pay for it all on your own. You have to wipe your own ass going forward. Do you understand me? You better start going back to the basics before you start working for someone and earning pay because you're not going anywhere in life at this rate. <laughs> Becky was begging for forgiveness to the wedding venue and she promised to pay back the wedding dress fees and they were able to settle out of court. However, the settlement, which included the fees necessary for paying for the dress, was north of $80,000. She was going to be in debt for a while. She ran around like a child with her head cut off to various loaning companies to try and pay off all of her payments because otherwise, she would have been sent to jail. 
After she graduated college, she was chased out of her parents' house immediately. So she had to fend for herself. She works day and night to try and pay off her loans. Apparently, she doesn't even have enough money to pay for clothes to wear to work. So, she's asking her friends to give her their hand-me-downs. She cuts the hand-me-downs and sews them together to try and make them fit because they're all kinds of shapes and sizes. Thank you for watching till the end. If you felt good about this video, like the video. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Subscribe too! Your likes and subs lead to our motivation. We have so many videos on our channel as well, so go ahead and take a look. See you in the next video!